Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to another YouTube video and in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about inflation. Hopefully you guys get a lot of value from this video because there's so much to learn about investing and the finance space in general. So we're gonna dive right into it. And for those of you that are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button because this is the greatest investing and finance channel in the world. The most important thing is that we give you a lot of value from the content that I make and produce on here. And that's what we're doing today in today's Whiteboard Wednesday. We're gonna be talking about inflation. So without further ado, let's dive into this episode. So welcome back, long time no see, and if you haven't smashed that like button, go do that now while I'm telling you a little bit about inflation. So essentially, what inflation is, if you haven't heard of it, if you have, great, you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Uh, but if you haven't heard of it, inflation is pretty much meaning that, you know, if you had a dollar or you had a hundred dollars of a money in 2009, that now it's worth less and less in purchasing power in 2020. So that's pretty much what inflation means. And now we're gonna talk about inflation and what it means for your money uh, from 2009 to 2020 based off of rent and minimum wage. And this will simply explain to you what's happening. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to beat this problem, right? Exactly how to beat inflation. So rent, we're gonna look at from 2009 to 2020. So I'm gonna give you the facts of rent, which happened to be $690. So I six ninety is just a good starting point. So this could be one bed, one bath, or it could be you know two bed, one bath in you know maybe like a more away from the city kind of area. So essentially, we're looking at six ninety in the U.S. per month for rent in two thousand and nine. And so obviously, with time, right, as we get into twenty twenty or closer into the future in general, the price should be going up, right? Because mortgage rates are going up, so rent should be going up as well. So let's talk about exactly what that price is. And rent here is actually nine. 33 per month okay so it's increased from 690 to 933 so that's about a 30 percent increase in rent and don't fact check me on that i'm just gonna put a plus here because it's roughly uh 30 percent in increase so again this is per month so it's increased quite drastically right so what does that mean for your minimum wage right and again the, the reason why i'm using minimum wage and a lot of people say well don't use minimum wage i don't make minimum wage how is this relatable to me so what's important to know about minimum wage and how it actually does relate to you is that the majority of the u.s population only makes a minimum wage this is a federal minimum wage this is what the this is what the federal government says that we need to make to have a good standard of living that's what minimum wage is used for and this is important because yes, currently maybe it doesn't affect you, right? But if we go into back into the Great Depression where everything was going down, 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 right? The stock market was taking a tumble. The real estate market was also going down. When all these things were happening, what kept people afloat is this federal minimum wage. This doesn't affect the millionaires or the billionaires. It doesn't. It doesn't affect these types of people. This does not affect those rich class because they have savings accounts, they have investment accounts, they have assets, they have portfolios, they have all these things. But what has the middle to lower class is the minimum wage. So let's talk about what the difference is between 2009 and 2020 minimum wage, okay? So what's crazy, and this is gonna surprise you, right? So we had a 30% increase in rent payments. So we should have an equal or greater increase, right? A greater increase than 30% in minimum wage because we want the standard of living to go up. So the federal minimum wage in 2009, as you probably know, I don't know if you remember, was 725, 725 for the minimum wage, okay? And the federal minimum wage today in 2020 as I'm making this video, and it might change, but hopefully, uh, you know, this does change because it's actually 725 also. <laughs> This is a serious problem because there has been no increase, no increase, no increase. That's a problem. If this is going up, right? If rent is going up and federal minimum wage is not going up, that's a problem, right? As you can probably tell, that means the standard of living and the quality of lives are actually decreasing versus increasing, right? But how do we avoid this? That's the most important step, right? This is knowing this is great and all, but, but at the end of the day, you have to take action to get to another level of avoiding getting stuck in this federal minimum wage bubble and getting stuck in inflation. You don't want to get stuck in inflation and never be able to escape. You don't want to be here. 
right? So how do we get that? Well, you can't really escape it. It's actually encompassed into our society, right? It's important to have, and we'll get to that in a different video. But the most important thing that you can take away from this is you need to do two things. You need to go and create multiple income sources. You need to have multiple streams of income. When you have this in place, when something like a recession happens, when this happens and this happens, then it's gonna happen every 10, 15, 20 years or so. And the best way to prepare for this, you either need to have multiple income sources or you need to have the skills that make you more money than the average minimum wage worker, right? You can't make more than someone that flips burgers with the only skill that you might have of flipping burgers, right? If you only know how to make McDonald's patties, then you won't make more than someone that makes McDonald's patties, right? What you can do is you can watch the video I have linked up here and it's gonna show you exactly the skills that you can develop in less than three months time. Some of them might take six months or so, but in pretty much less than a year's time that will also return you with more income than a general nine to five worker, okay? So this is really important because if you don't do these in the next few months and you are making minimum wage or you know someone that's making minimum wage and you're worried for their well-being, even if they have a degree, right? If they, even if they have a degree in something that they might not be super passionate about or maybe they are passionate about, but they just don't know how to get their foot in the door, have them watch this video because these are the 10 skills that you should have so that way you can avoid this trap. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, go smash that like button. If it's your first time on the channel, please subscribe. Both of these help the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you have any questions, leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you like content like this, go share it with a friend. Without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.